Welcome back. What I want to do in this video, and this is this is going to be the last video, I think, for at least for a while on the regulation of glycolysis versus gluconeogenesis, but I want, what I wanted to do is I wanted to clear up one thing, and what, what, what we had been talking about was really just the allosteric, we talked about the allosteric effect on PFK1, right? And we said PFK1 was an allosteric enzyme, and and normally, when we're stimulating glycolysis, we have to have fructose 2,6-bisphosphate present, right? And that normally, um, in the absence of it and in the presence of ATP and citrate, PFK1 is rendered inactive, right? Well, it turns out that fructose bisphosphatase 1, and I want to be perfectly clear about that, fructose bisphosphatase 1, and that's the, okay, so, so we're going to have fructose bisphosphatase 1. One and of course that's the enzyme that takes it's a gluconeogenic enzyme that takes fructose one six one six bisphosphate and converts it into fructose six phosphate right it's a gluconeogenic enzyme and of course it uses water to hydrolyze off that phosphate right and I want to be perfectly clear about something this enzyme is also an allosteric enzyme. It's allosteric, just like phosphofructokinase 1, right? Um, the only um, difference between this enzyme and, and or, or between PFK1 and this enzyme is that fructose 2,6-bisphosphate has a different effect, okay? So normally, normally we have, you know, we have fructose bisphosphatase, right? We have fructose bisphosphate, so this is fructose bisphosphatase 1, right? And essentially, let's say that here's the allosteric site for, what was it, for fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, right? Now, essentially, and remember, what, what did what did fructose 2,6-bisphosphate do? Well, it activated glycolysis, right? It activated glycolysis, and I always mentioned that it inhibited gluconeogenesis, but right now we're going to find out why it inhibits gluconeogenesis. And the reason is that when fructose 2,6-bisphosphate binds to fructose bisphosphatase 1, it changes the conformation enough to where, and actually let, let me do this, let me designate, let me designate fructose 1,6-bisphosphate as this, okay? Because normally, remember, fructose bisphosphatase 1, uh, its substrate, or its only substrate, is fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, right? But when when fructose 2,6-bisphosphate binds in the allosteric site, right, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate has a, or at least the enzyme has a lowered affinity for fructose, for fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So as long as fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is bound in the allosteric site on fructose bisphosphatase 1, you could sort of think as fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is sort of repelled. And the reason is because fructose 2,6-bisphosphate changes the conformation of fructose bisphosphatase 1 enough to where the affin its affinity for fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is lowered. And so this, it doesn't completely stop gluconeogenesis, but it ultimately slows it down. And when you combine that fact with the fact that fructose 2,6-bisphosphate activates PFK1, you have the complete recipe and the environment for activation of, of glycolysis and stimulation or, or inhibition. Acti excuse me, activation of glycolysis and inhibition of gluconeogenesis. So really the key here, I just want to underscore again, is that fructose 2,6-bisphosphate activates glycolysis, inhibits gluconeogenesis, activates PFK1, in, um, inhibits a fructose bisphosphatase one. So one of the things that's that's important to understand is that the way that it stimulates glycolysis is by activation of PFK1, right? The way it inhibits gluconeogenesis is by inhibition or allosteric inhibition of fructose bisphosphatase one. So I just wanted to clear that up. See you in the next video.